Well, aloha and good morning to all of you tuning in here on the Honolulu Star Advertiser Facebook page. Welcome to day two of the COVID care conversation. I'm Ryan Kalesuji here on Oahu. And aloha, good morning. I'm Yanji Denise here on the Big Island. We are practicing some serious social distancing, Ryan and I, uh, an ocean apart and coming to you live wherever you happen to be watching right now. This is an opportunity for us to have a casual conversation about the very serious consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic, how it's affecting us here at home, and we want you to be a part of it. So please give us a like, let us know you're here. Good morning, Chris. I see that GM, that's an obvious good morning. Uh, let us know where you're watching from and you see that scroll right there below. We want you to answer our question of the day, which is, are we doing enough when it comes to social distancing? Let's talk about it. Yeah, that's right. So we want to hear what your thoughts are on the social distancing. Of course, this is sort of day two of the statewide mandate that is asking all non-essential workers to stay home uh, to really limit the social interaction that we are having with those around us. And also we are entering sort of day one of uh, the travel quarantine that has been placed into effect by the state of Hawaii. Uh, we're gonna be talking about all those things, uh, but first up, we also want to thank uh, our sponsor who really partnered with us in this effort to bring you this broadcast. Yes, and that is the Hawaii Executive Executive Collaborative. That's a collection of Hawaii business leaders that are committed to making our state a better place to live. And of course, that's why we are here. We wanna to talk to you about how you're enduring uh, this stay at home mandate. And that goes again to our question, are we doing enough when it comes to social distancing? We wanna cover some headlines today. Um, as of noon Wednesday, six new cases of coronavirus here in the islands. That's a total of 95 positive cases. State health officials though, uh, the big article on the front page of the paper today say that it will be, the coronavirus will be a serious threat to Hawaii for up to five months. Yeah, uh, Bruce Anderson, Dr. Bruce Anderson from the Hawaii Department of Health making that announcement yesterday during a special Senate COVID task force meeting that was held uh, at the state capitol talking about the future of what the state is planning to do. It was also announced how they are uh, making efforts now to sort of plan ahead for any sort of surge that they could potentially be seeing. Another thing that he did mention beyond those four to five months of being impacted was also the fact that we have not even begun to see the peak of what it, uh, the COVID pandemic will have here in Hawaii. Uh, we have a comment from Teresa who is you know, asking, when will this end? I think that is a big question that uh, a lot of people are concerned about and a lot of people are asking uh, is, when will this end? And state officials right now are sort of trying to plan ahead, try to base everything off the information that they are getting from, of course, the other uh, countries that are dealing with this and also being realistic of how we will be able to manage it right here at home. Yeah, I mean, you saw with Bruce Anderson, that prediction of around five months. I think they're really trying to temper our expectations. The DOE has extended uh, the school closures, of course, to the end of April. The Star Advertiser, if you want to go there after this broadcast is POW, to answer their big question of the day, and that is, do you agree that schools should be closed through April 30th? There's a yes, a no, and also it should be till the end of the year. There's some people who think that school's going to be out basically until next fall. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Should the closure continue beyond that? We'd love to hear from you on that. Now we have another um, question here from Bobby and says, how can we be effective when the government itself is allowing all the cruise ships to deposit their humans on our shores? So no, we are not doing enough. There's been so much anxiety when it does come to cruise ships about this, Ryan. Um, so many people nervous. And I know that state officials say they've been doing um, all that they can to limit the exposure of uh, the state to any cruise ship passengers. Just a few days ago, some folks were allowed to dock uh, and fly out of here and local residents were allowed to stay given, uh, uh, you know, provided that they abided by that self quarantine. But I, I think Bobby, a lot of people do feel um, that anxiety for sure. Yeah, they actually had those passengers and chartered them uh, off to a separate section of the airport, not even through uh, what we normally drop people off at at the airport, they actually were taken towards uh, the old uh, airport side, more off of um, the uh, op complete opposite side of the airport and sort of entered onto chartered aircrafts that then took those passengers on that cruise ship away. 
we do also know that there are others that are expected to dock here in Honolulu in the coming days and weeks uh, to get food and refuel. But again, state officials are saying that those passengers on those ships will not be allowed to get off. Uh, there, are all, there are as well some of the cruise ships that are currently here in Honolulu Harbor. Uh, I do know of a few people that are actually that work on the cruise ship that say they are stuck there. They're not letting them off the cruise ship. The ship is basically being repaired. And once it's repaired, they're leaving. So the crew that's on there right now, uh, you know, all the servers, all the entertainers, they're actually stuck on the ship, not allowed to leave. So state officials making it very clear that regardless as if they're showing symptoms or not, they are actually not being allowed to uh, leave the boat and leave the vessel. We've seen, of course, the impact of this now with this 14 day quarantine in place for anyone arriving to the islands, whether you're a visitor or a resident. Uh, the airline industry here in Hawaii has really come to a grinding halt. There is there is some, uh, you know, there are a few passengers coming in, but if you look at the schedules for Hawaii and for Southwest for the other uh, airlines, they've really slowed down. Anyone coming in now has a 14 day mandatory quarantine either at a hotel or at, um, you know, their place of residence, $5,000 fine up to a year in jail, just for some, um, you know, comparison, my mother-in-law lives in Alaska. She flew home and she says that there's, they have the same mandate, but it's a $25,000 fine. And they've been informed that they will be getting calls and possible house checks. So what do you think about the mandate? Uh, is it enough? Should we up the fine? And, and how do we really do that effectively? Um, you know, we don't really have enough officers to go knock on every single door. And I think that was some of the things that state officials were uh, speaking about in that news conference that happened last week, Saturday, in trying to facilitate this receiving of passengers and trying to figure out this quarantine situation. Again, today is the first official day, but yesterday, uh, of course, it was the last day where people could come in. For the past few weeks, we've seen uh, Honolulu Airport, uh, the Daniel K. Inouye International Airport, looking pretty uh, uh, pretty empty, uh, but yesterday was not the case. Take a look at this photo uh, that we have as well. This was the scene curbside um, yesterday uh, that we saw yesterday as well. So uh, it was uh, very interesting to see the amount of people that were showing up there uh, on the curbside of the airport. You know, Ryan, I've lost your audio here, so I don't know if you can hear me, but I certainly can't hear you. So um, work with me on this one, and hopefully you're going to come back soon. Let me know. Can you hear me right now? I can hear Yanji. Yes, I okay, can. Okay, you can hear me. So I'll just talk for a second while uh, you work that out. Um, James Wyman, some of the uh, comments that we're getting, says... If we don't do this right, we're all going to die because Hawaii doesn't have enough ventilators and medical resources and medical staff. Well, James, you've got a great point. Um, I think a lot of people are concerned about the hospital beds and do our hospitals have enough capacity for this? Now, to that end, uh, the HAIMA is working with the Hawaii Convention Centers and the hotels, also along with the Hawaii Tourism Authority. They are trying to figure out, you know, we've got this amazing resource, which is the Convention Center, and we've also got a lot of beds um, in all of our hotel rooms. If you look at New York City as a model for this, of course, they're farther along with this crisis than we are. Uh, what they are talking about there is converting hotel space into makeshift hospitals for non-COVID-19 patients. This is so that people can be quarantined away from that and that the patients with the highest risk then th can then be at the hospital. So that is one way that New York is taking that on. Um, and there has been some talk about having our hotels at, and uh, the convention center be a staging area or be a place where that can take place. Yeah, so the photo that is currently up right now uh, actually shows what state officials are sort of preparing for as they begin to uh, navigate through this and try to see if they can help to prepare uh, the convention center for this situation. Let's see. So I'm not sure if you can still hear me or not. Sorry, we, we hopefully have gone through some of our uh, audio issues, but hopefully everything is good. Let us know if you're watching, if you can hear and see us. We just want to make sure that we are reaching everybody uh, right now. And uh, as we continue to see more comments coming in, uh, here we go. We have another question. You know, Roxana, that's a great question. There's a question here from Roxana today. 
why are we allowing flights in and out of the islands? I think a lot of the thinking behind allowing flights in and out is to let medical, uh, let returning residents come back. Also, there are medical professionals. We do rely on a number of travel nurses. Uh, there are there are different um, resources that we need. So there have to be some flights in and out of the islands, but we could get to a point where they do halt domestic travel. That is not unheard of in other countries. They have done that. Um, Italy is one where they've really restricted any movement whatsoever. So we could get to that place, um, but you know, hopefully we don't get there. I think that, you know, because we are an island community, there is a sense that there needs to be some travel in and out. Uh, thank you for letting us know that you can hear us both. We appreciate that. Um, and I want to talk, I, I thought, uh, what did I, I just saw a comment. Oh, hello to Randy in Canada. Um, oh, we're getting so many, <laughs> so many. Uh, so many wonderful comments, and we'd like to hear if you think that we're doing enough for social distancing. Uh, Chelsea's got a great question. What are we doing to create social distancing in our homeless community? You know, that's another place where there's been some talk of perhaps the hotels stepping in, of cre creating um, more quarantine facilities for our homeless community um, so that there is more social distancing there. Obviously, that's something that's very hard to enforce and to require uh, because the homeless ha have a very special circumstance. Yeah, we also have uh, another question here, I believe from Jana. She's uh, asking, are we completely disregarding travelers who flew in yesterday before the quarantine started? And officially, yes, the quarantine began uh, today at 12 o'clock midnight. So going into Thursday. Now, the state did recommend a self-quarantine for all those coming, uh, even up until you know a few weeks ago when the governor said Hawaii's sort of closed right now, encouraged people not to come to Hawaii to change their plans. Uh, they told people to sort of do a voluntary quarantine situation. But again, today is sort of the mandated quarantine. Uh, again, how state officials are going to be managing that is the agriculture forms that people usually fill out uh, and you should give back to the flight attendants upon their arrival into the airport or uh, into Hawaii. The flight attendants are actually not collecting them. Passengers are going to be actually holding that and will be met by officials when they get off of the plane and they will have to uh, make sure that their identification matches what they have written down on the form. Uh, they will then take the form and then put it into a database and, and then really try to figure out uh, when they're gonna be visiting and following up with these people to make sure that they are in place during this 14 day quarantine. Uh, you know, there's a lot of been a lot of suggestions as to how they enforce that, how they regulate that. Uh, I think state officials are going to sort of see how this unrolls and see if people are heeding that 14 day quarantine. I think that Jen's got an interesting point here, which is put wristbands on all new arrivals. Um, you know, it is really hard. In India, for instance, they've done something where they've been stamping people on the hand uh, with an indelible ink that lasts for a long time so that people, uh, you know, can be identified. The thing is, wristbands can be cut off. I think, you know, there, ink can be washed off. It, it, it is really trying to have somewhat of an honor system, if you will. Um, and, the, and the question is really, will people abide by that? Uh, we hope that we can work together as a community, that people do, um, you know, if they've been asked to self-quarantine, that they actually do that. And, you know, at, at, at some point, you really have to trust the community to actually to actually uh, abide by those restrictions. Uh, beyond that, you know, beyond cases coming in, what do you think about the social distancing that is happening in your own community? How do you feel that that is going? Um, and, you know, when you go out to the stores, are people really maintaining that six foot dif distance? Is every trip necessary? You know, I'm very interested to hear what the community online has to say about that this morning. And we uh, have seen shots right now of, uh, this is actually a shot of the Hilton Hawaiian Village Lagoon, uh, normally an area that has a lot of people. Uh, obviously right now there is a, uh, a, a lot of these beaches are looking empty because of the fact that we're uh, the tourists and those people are being asked to stay indoors. So just the general surroundings, I think what people are used to seeing uh, here in Hawaii, just not looking like the Hawaii that we're used to seeing. Of course, this is what, officials want to see. They want to see empty beaches. They want to make sure that we are, are not really seeing and dealing with some of these things and having these crowded uh, beaches and people still swimming. We actually saw a video as well of police officers telling beachgoers that were laying down on the beach yesterday that the beach was closed, that they did have access into the water, but they were not allowed to sort of lay out on the beach. 
Yeah, this was interesting. Yesterday, uh, we saw that, oh, are you doing the arrivals picture? Or we're not doing the arrivals picture. There's the arrivals at uh, at the airport. We saw a lot of people there yesterday trying to beat the quarantine. Um, and I don't know, I look like I might be frozen in your um, in your stream there, Ryan. So maybe you want to take me on and off. At least that is how it looks on my end. Um, <laughs> okay, well, yeah, you know, maybe you want to... I'm going to try to take over here. Uh, uh, because again, so Yanji is actually on the big island. So hopefully we uh, are going to get her back soon. Uh, but right now, again, we are seeing a lot of those, um, you know, a lot of these people who are, obey, uh, are are following now this 14 day quarantine. And we're going to start seeing those effects uh, and seeing how much of an impact that it's going to have on our visitor industry. We already are getting word that uh, 80 hotels are shut down or will be shutting down here to, um, really limit i guess you know when they don't have customer they don't have tourists of course arriving here so that is going to make a significant impact on the tourism industry here in hawaii uh we're going to try to see if we can bring yanji back in can you hear us in? and hello again okay, i want to say hello to michael who says start with an aloha thank you to our first responders they need the emotional support thank you in advance Absolutely, Michael. And to that end, we want to highlight what we're calling our Hawaii Hero of the Day. This, of course, is your forum. Uh, it's a place for all of us to talk. So if you've got a hero that you want to highlight, let us know. The person that we identified today was Karen Shire. She's a nurse at the Queens Medical Center. Her caption on Instagram this morning really says it all. It says, I stay at work for you stay at home for me. Uh, we really want to echo that message. Karen, of course, a nurse in our own community right there at Queens, this photo taken just this morning. Uh, you can see her there all in her medical gear. And she's really making the plea that, you know, if you have the ability to stay home, please do. She does not. She's on the front lines. Um, and to that end, talking about Queens, Queens has a fantastic resource that we want to share with you. They are taking calls from citizens uh, and doctors, including those out of state, about whether or not they should get the COVID test. There is always a nurse at that hotline. We put it right there on your screen. screen. The number 691-2619, 691-2619. That is a resource and they are actually, that nurse is actually capable of writing a prescription for you to then go through and get some drive-through testing. So that is an amazing resource uh, for you to call. The other one, of course, Aloha United Way. That's just 211. They have trained operators seven in the morning until 10 at night they can answer all covid questions um so 211 or that queen's medical center number they we really want to direct you and shift to those resources as opposed to calling 911 which has been inundated with calls from people concerned about the coronavirus they're really not in a position to do that we want to keep those lines free for true medical emergencies someone having a heart attack a car accident and so forth yeah, and we have also uh, will be launching a new site today. It is something that we have been working on ourselves, uh, and it is uh, coronavirushawaii.com. Uh, really what it is, it's a hub that will provide you daily information that will have the latest updates of what's happening uh, with the virus, specifically here in Hawaii. So we'll have totals on there. We'll have live video updates as well as things that you can share with information. But more than that, we are also providing a way for you to get involved and for you to help out. So we are building out a uh, area where you can volunteer to help to serve people in our community. We're hearing uh, of various needs from face masks to uh, other sorts of things uh, that we are working to set up. Uh, it is a work in progress in that area, so please be mindful with us, but we are also going to be taking information there as well. And in addition to that, we are also trying to support local businesses. So if you're a small business, you can actually list your business on this website or your service uh, and actually create sort of this hub so that those people are looking for services can then connect with the people that are trying to find it. So I encourage you to check out coronavirushawaii.com for more information uh, and to see and stay connected there as well. Yeah, Ryan has been burning the midnight oil, getting that yeah. website up and running. <laughs> and we appreciate that because that's going to be a great landing page for you to find resources of all kinds like he just talked about. Uh, the other thing, if you're a parent at home with little kids, and I feel you, I have a one-year-old and a three-year-old, um, Honolulu Theater for Youth is debuting something today. They're going all digital. Uh, they are, of course, a traveling theater company here in Hawaii. They bring art and uh, music and 
uh, all kinds of things to preschools and to elementary schools throughout our state. Well, they can't have performances and there are obviously no schools to tour. So today they're going all digital. They're introducing a 30 minute show they're calling the Highway, H-I way. Um, it's a video version of Honolulu Theater for Youth's performances. They can be viewed as a family at home. I know there's a lot of digital stuff right now. There's a lot of stuff for parents and kids, but what's special about this is that these are people in Hawaii making content for Hawaii youth. So they are going to be focusing on social distancing, on isolation, isolation, on the coronavirus, on fears that parents may have, all that stuff. They're going to do 30-minute programs that you can enjoy as a family at home. Uh, that'll be on YouTube starting today. And they've also partnered with Hawaii News Now, so check your local listings for that. Again, the, uh, the program is called The Highway, and the paper has a write-up about it as well today. So that's a wonderful resource for parents. We're so excited to talk about that. Yeah, and again, we want to um, thank everybody for commenting. We're seeing a lot of comments coming in. So thank you for everyone for being engaged. This is really what it is, uh, trying to get to as many comments and talk to and hear from all of you. Roxanne is asking what happened if people go traveling out of the island. So again, uh, you can leave the island. Uh, of course, flights will be limited. Hawaiian Airlines also saying that they are actually cutting back on the number of flights that they have outgoing. Uh, and really, it really depends on the destination that you travel to and what sort of parameters they have in place. We do know that Hawaii is the first and only state in the nation that is actually doing this 14 day quarantine for anyone coming into the state. None of the other states uh, are currently doing that. They do have procedures where people are checking at the airport. Again, every airport and every state is different because of the fact that uh, the federal government has not necessarily put any parameters on the airports themselves. So it's really up to the states themselves to sort of develop their own policy. So it really depends on where you're traveling to if you're leaving the state. Uh, and also we want to note that inter-island travel uh, is continuing as well. So if you're flying from to and from some of the neighbor islands, we do know that uh, those services are continuing. Hawaiian Airlines announcing, however, they're scaling back in the number of flights, but uh, those are happening as well. But we are seeing those flights being extremely empty. Uh, we, you know, we know one of our colleagues in the media uh, Mileka Lincoln, she actually posted that she was on a plane, but there wasn't enough weight on the plane because there wasn't enough people. So they had to sort of go back to the gate and sort of get more luggage. Uh, a lot of the reasons why uh, they're also keeping those inner island services going is because Hawaiian Airline does so much more than shuttle passengers back and forth, but they do support these small businesses and cargoes that are going back and forth. So everything from blood bank, uh, the blood that's coming back and forth between islands because we know that the blood bank actually is only receiving blood here on Oahu right now. Uh, so some of the essential medical supplies and things like that are going back and forth between the islands. So important to keep that service up and running. Um, Paul's got a question here that we love. Will you be bringing in guest speakers and experts as well? As well? Absolutely, Paul. We want to know who you want to hear from. Um, are there people in public health? Uh, are there specific, uh, you know, specific industries you want to hear from? We definitely appreciate your suggestions for guests. Uh, we are in the process right now of um, figuring out this technology. So until we work out all the kinks, this is only show number two, and we are going to be here every day at 10 o'clock. So once we get all of the technical stuff sorted out for Ryan and I, we definitely have a long list of um, people that we want to hear from. And we'd love to know um, who you'd like to hear from, because we know that, you know, what's what's unique about this medium, and we really appreciate the mayor, the governor, um, Bruce Anderson, Dr. Sarah Park, all those folks for doing their daily live streams. Those have been incredibly helpful. Um, but those are one-way streets, right? You get to consume that information. You don't necessarily get to ask the questions. So we are really looking forward to bringing guests on here, and you will be able then to... Um, to ask your questions directly. So comment below, let us know who you wanna hear from uh, and do us a favor, share this on your page. We wanna get the word out that this is happening. Invite your friends to watch at 10 o'clock every morning. This can be your social hour uh, to get together, to talk about what's happening in the islands. You know, so much of us and myself included, we're watching news all day, we're checking Twitter, we're checking Instagram, but that is just, absorbing all this information is just coming at you one after another. And this is really, again, to do a two-way street. So thank you for that question. Uh, let us know who you want to hear from. And thanks, Jana. I appreciate that. It's a great forum. We agree. Thank goodness for technology. Uh, what a wonderful way for us to talk to each other. I do want to highlight... Um, I actually have a... Uh, oh, go ahead. ...that has come forward. I'm um, uh, talking about the economic relief plan that is being considered for all 
uh, we are actually going to be sort of diving into some more of these discussions actually tomorrow. Our topic is going to really focus around unemployment, uh, as well as ways in which we can help small businesses. We will be talking about links that will be provided. Of course, there is the SBA loan where small businesses can apply to online. Again, a lot of those links and resources available on the Honolulu Star Advertiser.com, uh, as well as through various partners. We also have that at coronavirushawaii.com where there's a place specifically for small businesses. So I encourage you to check out that. But we're actually gonna be focus focusing on this specific topic tomorrow and try to get you all the resources for those of you who may be entering the unemployment world, things that you need to know uh, in getting ready for making sure that you have all your paperwork set up. And we do know that there have been some issues, of course, with the unemployment office because of the sheer volume of people that are now finding themselves without work. So we're gonna be diving more into this tomorrow. So thank you for that question. Yeah, I also wanna point out um, in answering that question, um, there is a great article right now on the paper uh, website, which is about Hawaii's officials list of efforts to help ease coronavirus related pains. Now that's various things that the state is doing to help the most vulnerable. So for instance, Hawaiian homes, um, mortgages, having a delay on payments for those, um, different, you know, different places that you can get food, uh, resources for business owners. There's just various things that the state itself can control right now. Um, and the paper has a full list of that. So we don't want to necessarily go over all of that, but definitely go look at that. The other article that I wanted to point you to, um, because we know so many people are suddenly in a place where they might be unemployed, is how to get health insurance if you are worried about COVID-19 or if you've just lost a job. The paper's got a great article on step-by-step -step, um, how to deal with COBRA, how to deal with insurance. So definitely check that out because we know the number of unemployment, uh, people who are unemployed is rising right now the count is around 80 hotels closed and of course that has a huge ripple effect on all the other businesses uh rental cars tour companies restaurants gift shops i mean the list goes on and on all the people who work in those hotels uh so that's a great place to go uh really important to have health insurance to have coverage right now so check out that article i thought it was one of the best things in the paper today uh, that's right. And of course, we want to encourage you. We know a lot of people are watching and you're at home and you're thinking, how can I help? How can I get involved? Uh, we, again, we want to point you to some other resources. One that we sort of highlighted yesterday for a little bit, Hawaii Community Foundation. If you head over to their page, they've actually started the Resilience Fund. And this is a way to help sort of provide grants and money and opportunities for uh, those specifically dealing with this uh, on the front lines and really helping to provide care and support to the medical industry, as well as those Beyond, of course, we know Hawaii Community Foundation does so much for so many people in the community. So I encourage you, if you're looking to give, please visit Hawaii Community Foundation uh, and check out the Resiliency Fund, where a uh, Resilience Fund, I should say, where you can actually go and donate as well. Uh, we are going to be wrapping things up here. Again, we thank you for everyone that's commenting right now. Continue to comment. We're going to continue to track these comments, and uh, we'll get to as many as we can tomorrow. We know that there are some questions that we can't necessarily answer here. Live, So we're going to try to work on getting that information for you uh, during our time off before our next show again tomorrow. And again, tomorrow we will be focusing primarily more on the unemployment side, but please continue to share this, like it. Uh, we want to get this word out there that this is a resource for all of you. And the more that you're able to help us get the word out, the more we can all be engaged in this very important conversation. Uh, I know a lot of people are wondering how to help. The other thing that you can do, oh, the first thing you can do that everybody has been saying is to stay home, right? As much as you can stay home on an individual basis. Doesn't cost you any money, hopefully not. Uh, you know, it's the easiest thing to do is to stay home, to encourage your friends and family to stay home, Call, call those folks that you think might not be complying with social distancing and encourage them to do so. The more we can do that, you know, the more we do that now, the quicker this will all be over. We can get back to, you know, giving each other hugs and handshakes and getting back to work and putting our kids in school. That's what we all want. So number one thing you can do, how to help stay home. The other thing you can do, um, if you are in a position to contribute, the Hawaii Community Foundation has created a resiliency fund. You can learn more about, about that at Hawaii Community Foundation foundation.com. Um, Kamu has a great uh, comment here, which is try to work it out with your landlord. You know, I mean, there we're going to be doing a whole show about what to do if you've lost your job. Um, and we are going to be delving into those resources about rent, about mortgage, about all of that. So we're hoping to have a guest on for that. If not, um, 
you know, we will, we will at least try to ask those questions and bring you those resources. And Joan has a recap question. Um, Ryan, if you could throw that one up there, we will, I will, uh, put a, a comment at the top of this, uh, that will just have the resources that I've been talking about and that Ryan has been talking about. We'll just make a list and we'll put it in the description. So check back here after this broadcast is pow. Um, and we could do that. And without further ado, I think this is time for us to wrap up and say aloha. Yeah, so again, we want to thank you for tuning in to the show. Uh, again, tell everyone about it. We will see you here again tomorrow at 10 o'clock on the Star Advertiser. Aloha.